Hey guys, thanks for checking out the Bucked Up Podcast. If you don't mind hitting the like, subscribe button, we have new episodes coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. This episode is sponsored by Exotic Roots Hydro, which I have to give a huge shout out to. They are a huge supporter of the podcast, and I'm really happy to be working with them. If you're ever in Rochester, New York, and you need to learn about any of your hydroponic needs, go to their shop. You can follow them at Exotic Roots Hydro on Instagram. Shout out their whole team. They have an amazing venue space. Uh, They're going to be putting on tons of events. Just make sure to follow Exotic Roots Hydro on Instagram. And if you're ever in Rochester, definitely stop by. Let's get back into it. It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Now he fucked up. I don't know, bro. I just don't like the entitlement type of shit. Mm, like, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like people just become like entitled like this shit. I don't feel entitled to nothing, you know? No, I feel that. Are you you don't. Uh, there was like a 10 minute clip of you getting interviewed on YouTube or something talking about starting. And it yeah. made me like mad emotional not to get all weird. Like, yeah. but hearing you start, it made me like because I started this not knowing anything. Like you said, you'd pull up to like I pull up to these places like in New York and the bra, like wherever, not knowing, just by myself, wanting to have these conversations. Yeah, and no one was that. there helping me yeah. do that shit. You know, I had my producers, but like the footwork was me, you know? Yeah. That's fire too, bro. I ain't gonna lie. That's that's like, especially like in today's dynamic to have somebody that's, 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 that's new on the scene doing that, pulling up to different places. And you feel me? That's hard. And people don't, I understand, but a lot of people don't understand what it takes to actually do something like that. So I definitely yeah. commend you for sure. Because everyone wants to do it, but I someone said that success is like execution. Like, can you execute it? And that was kind of it. No matter how many little views I got on episodes, I just kept pushing and execute. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of what, that's why it got me emotional because that's what you were doing since like way younger than I was doing it. Yeah, yeah. You said you had the the idea in like what, like eighth grade or something? Was yeah, when you started? yeah, yeah. I came up with the idea in eighth grade, but like I abandoned the idea until I like graduated from high school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just, just, just because you know, uh, like it wasn't a cool thing to have a media platform back when I was in eighth grade. I was in eighth grade in 2008, yeah. So it wasn't really that cool, you know. But you know what I'm saying? Once I was able to mature and go through life, and once I graduated high school, I wasn't really, really think caring about what people thought was cool. It was more about what I thought was cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause once you put, I don't know, like when I first started releasing it, it's hard putting yourself out there, like yeah, for conversations, sure. like yeah, for sure. Like I'm so hard on that shit. As you could definitely, it's really just being like being your own worst critic. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So you started right after how long after high school did you start? That very like so I graduated high school 2013, like summer. So you know, like June 2013. Yeah. Like by like jet like the summer of 2014, I was on hip hop lab shit. Damn. Cause I I went to school, I went to like Kalamazoo and shit to like pursue uh like college. Like at the community college, like, cause you know, uh, in Michigan, and, and they got MSU, they got a uh, uh, University of Michigan, and they got uh, Western. So I went to Western, but I couldn't get into Western Michigan. Like, so I went to that community college and got like a little apartment out there. Was doing that, yeah. but it wasn't for me. You feel me? Long story yeah. short, I ended up trying to get a job. At the hustling, I broke my arm, and that forced me to move back to Detroit. And that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Wait, I, breaking your arm? Yeah. Best yeah. thing that ever happened to me. How'd you break your arm? Because I was up at school hustling, bro, and I'm like, I'm about to stop hustling. I'm about to actually get a job. So my my I got a job, and the first hour working at my job, I broke my shoulder. So that made me go back to the crib. You believe in coincidences? Yeah, for sure. And I believe in divine intervention, like. I'm trying to buckle down and God, like, all right, look, you know you're supposed to go back to Detroit, so now I'm about to send you back. Like, <laughs> no, nah, that's what I'm saying. That yeah, shit's wild. For sure, for sure. Cause I had I, I had shit to do in the D that I had to <laughs> yeah. accomplish. You know what I'm saying? You were really pushing that shit away. Yeah, yeah. I was really pushing that shit away for sure. 
For sure. Was there ever like was there ever a time where you 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 really did think I'm done with this? I'm getting it like oh hell yeah, fuck yeah. Bro, my first YouTube channel got deleted, bro. How many subscribe? Not that it matters, but was it growing at all? Yeah, I mean, I was I was making I was making like three thousand a month off the channel. You feel me? I had like classic Detroit content that would never be reproduced or recreated because it just can't be. Like it took me a long time, like even emotionally, to get over that shit. Like I couldn't even imagine. I get, I get like worried about that shit. Getting it del- I try yeah. to back up all my shit now because yeah, yeah, like yeah. you definitely gotta back up. So what happened shit. when it got deleted? Why did it get deleted? Man, somebody made a, a fake hip hop lab, and, and at the time I'm just young, I didn't know how to the proper channels to go through to get it, you know what I'm saying? The problem rectified. You feel yeah. me? So all it was a learning experience, man. And you thought you were done after it got you were like, fuck it after it got deleted. Fuck yeah, because it's like Bro, like this is how I'm sustaining myself of my YouTube channel. I had moved out the crib. I got my first, I got my first house. I'm paying rent. You feel me? My YouTube channel gone. So now I don't have people that want to advertise on my YouTube channel. Nobody's paying me for videos. I don't have the subscribers. Nobody's paying me. My all my revenue streams is cut. So I it really just took me back down to ground zero and made me just hustle real hard, you know. Damn. But look at it now. How? Yeah, that is true. But like, how long uh, were you doing it before you were making? You could move out on the on the podcast. Like, what you mean? Like, how long were you working on it before you could like pay for your life from it? Oh shit! Uh, so I started in 2014. By 2016, the first time I got a thousand dollars from YouTube, I told my mom that I was moving out. So that was. I had to be Yeah, I had to it had to be like yeah, like but it was two years? Yeah, probably probably two, I feel like two that's years. the thing. Yeah. If you can make it two years grinding, yeah. like then you can prove that some people give up, but two years is the like and that's it. I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage a lot of kids don't take advantage of being able to stay at the crib and not have to pay no bills. Even grown people like if yeah. you're at the crib right now with your people, there's nothing wrong with that. But just take advantage of not having to pay bills. You feel me? And stack your money. Can I be on? I live at home right now. Like, I, okay. I'm i staying in hotels, like, on yeah. the road. But, like, I don't have my own place when yeah. I go back home. But you're working towards something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if you just was at the crib not doing nothing, then that's when I feel like people be on bullshit. Like, yeah. you working towards something, bro. Like, when you go back to the crib, your YouTube check going to be some shit. you can tell your people <laughs> that I'm about to move out, bro, you hitting all these cities and states, it's, it's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it is. It's because I know. Like, I know that uh, I don't. if you don't give up, that's what makes it. Like, having talent's one thing, but, like, just never giving up, like believing in yourself 100%. Hard work beats like, talent. When I got fired from my last job, I was kind of like, I'm never going to, I never want to work a real job again like that. Like, I feel that. I want to be my own boss. I'm 24 right now and I'm my own boss. And it's yeah. not like I'm making crazy money, but like, shit, it's cool. It's a cool feeling. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, you feel that. You're 26. Yeah, because yeah. you graduated high school two years uh, before me, yeah. and you have this is like a dream, like yeah, for sure. You know, like yeah. I live in my mom's apartment, and I have a studio in New York that my producers have that I use. But like to see you have this, it's like oh shit, it's achievable. Yeah, shit is definitely possible, bro. Like no cap, and like people don't even know all the shit. Like you know how they say, I was just talking, and I was just getting my haircut before you pull it up on my dog Kari. Kari Rocks, he's an entrepreneur in Detroit and shit. Like, we was just talking, like, bro, it's really more money, more problems, bro. Like, people think that's just a saying or a song. Like, that shit is really real, bro. Like, yeah. Like, that where you at right now, like, you should really, like, uh, appreciate it, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just, it, it just take in every step of, like, the come up, bro, because this shit get kind of like, it get like you feel me because now there's more money involved, and when you no, making money, you feel me. A lot of people want more, and then it's like, like shit, this somebody asked for some money. Either you, if I say yes or if I say no, you still about to feel away about me because if I yeah. tell you yeah and I give you the money, you are gonna come back and want some more. If I tell you no, you think I got money? Now you are gonna say I'm fake as hell. And you feel me? And I, I can't win. You know what I'm saying? So nah, that is a real. People are like uh, enjoy the you know enjoy what I'm doing now. And it's true, but it's weird because I am in these cool situations. And in the back of my head, I'm like, but I'm not getting 
I'm still thinking about making money, you know, yeah, but that's yeah. a stupid thing. Like I should be enjoying yeah, the situation. Sure. Enjoy it because the money is going to come. Bro. Anything that you work hard at, the money going to come at it, I feel like, especially if you were enjoying it. Where'd you learn that? Just, just from experience. Yeah. But like, why did you, even when you wanted to give up, why didn't you? Man, because I always, I always, I always, bro, I always felt like, I just felt like I just wasn't regular. Like, I just always felt like that. Like, you always feel like I was, I, I feel like I'm here for a bigger purpose. Mm-hmm. I always felt like even when shit was going, going bad, you feel me? Like, I always, I just feel like I'm here to accomplish a lot of shit and help a lot of people become rich and to help a lot of people achieve their dreams. I feel like that's my overall, like, purpose in life. Yeah. Because it's. I feel like when the more I get into the re- like the world, I realize that there is ways to make like no one teaches you that you can make money your own way. Yeah, nobody teaches you that for sure. And then you realize, oh, there's a lot of people out there who have money that made it their own way. No, most definitely. You don't. Uh, that is a weird thing. Why don't you think they teach that? Do you think it's because the people teach and don't do it themselves? I feel like it's something it's something that needs to be taught in school. Most definitely. It's something that needs to be taught in school, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely needs to be taught in school. Because they tripping because... They tripping because, like, we taught to become... We, we, we taught to conform to an institution. You feel me? Like, we taught to, you feel me, get the best grades you can, to get in the best schools, to get the best uh, degree, to get the best jobs. You feel me? But it's a lot of other things you could do besides that, you know? That's why I like podcasting, honestly. That's why I feel like this is my because I never liked the learning in that way. Mm. But like listening to podcasts, I don't know how you feel about it, but like conversations is where I'm best at like receiving my knowledge. Like I enjoy that people listen to my interviews. That's cool. That's cool. But I enjoy talking to you because then I get like knowledge from you or I enjoy talking to like con because like i get knowledge from them when talking to them and then like i can use that on myself and hopefully people listen and have that but it's like conversations are a good way to really learn how to live life like instead of just like in school like i don't know podcasting is where i learned a lot of my shit that's fire bro yeah i feel like podcasting is definitely like like a I love doing it. Like I love just, you know what I'm saying, just 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 discussing my opinions, you know what I'm saying? And and, and I feel like I feel like uh I can get a lot better at it just like anything else, you know. But yeah. you know, everything come come with come with experience. See, do you edit your own stuff too? No, I I don't edit the podcast, but I have two producers that put the graphics on. Oh, okay, okay. Like you don't edit it all, it's just all raw. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's fire, that's fire, that's fire. I like the and I look like an idiot more that way because it shows me not being prepared in certain situations or whatever. But I like showing the growth like, nah, this is a real conversation, like from start to finish. Here's an hour uncut of two people talking. I see. No, oh, that's heat for sure. For sure. For How sure. long are your interviews before you cut them down? Um, I might just take a couple things that just you know what I'm saying it might be some type of street political something I might have to take out or something but yeah mo- most of the time they're, they're 30 minutes okay I will take shit out if like it's incriminating I don't yeah, want yeah, I yeah. don't want the podcast in court you know yeah, what yeah, I mean yeah. but like, <laughs> yeah, so, so. <laughs> somebody might slip up and say something wild or something that's happened something and wild. I've had to edit that you know what I mean but other than that I 30 minutes what made you want to like have conversation like interview um i always always liked always loved interviews always loved watching interviews before i even knew what an interview was like i I, like that's what i liked watching like you know what i'm saying yeah so that's what made me want to kind of get into it you feel me and uh when i had the chance you know what i'm saying I, i just took advantage of it yeah but there's like something special about what you do there's a reason like you took off with your interviews more than other people yeah like, consistency bro that's all it is and it was really a lot of people doing interviews in detroit when i was doing them it was mm-hmm. kind of like a new kind of concept even like not a lot of rappers like had their own youtube channels 
only YouTube channel they would drop on is me and For Show Magazine. You feel me? So I feel like me and Joseph McFashion kind of were like on the head of the curve with a lot of things, you know? Yeah. And I I and I got to like shout out to him because I looked at him for a lot of things, you know? Like acknowledgement. I mean, not acknowledgement, but just like stuff that he was doing. Like I, I, I acknowledge that and kind of just put it into my own way, like in my own way with certain things. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that's fine. So you were like, you were listening to hit, you were listening to podcast. You were listening to interviews beforehand. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. I could tell you down there every interviewer, hip hop interviewer all the time. We talk about really? five, five, Freddie, big boy, uh, sway, um, uh, Charlemagne, uh, Wendy Williams. Um, you got, you got a big uh, Wendy Williams fan. No, not a big one. I, I, I was a big Wendy Williams fan when she when she was like a hip hop uh, yeah, when she journalist. Was really, yeah, like mm-hmm. I'm not really a good big fan of her. Right no, now. My grandma love Wendy Williams though. I'm telling you, like I, I got a, I got love for Wendy for sure. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, yeah, bro, I just been a fan of fan of all that young TV raps. Like, bro, I, I watched damn near every Vlad interview ever dropped, bro. I probably seen every one. Whenever people, the consistency the consistency thing is key. Like. Whenever someone like missed a week, I like I've never missed a week of episodes of drops, and I do three episodes a week now just because I want to like prove to myself I can. That's fire, bro. That's really fire. The consistency, like, what else am I doing? I'm doing comedy at night, but during the day, why not talk to cool? Why not drive to Detroit and try to talk to as many cool people as I can? That's fire, bro. So who 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 else in Detroit you got a chance to talk to so far? Um. I talked to Skywalker. Um, I've talked to all the Bruiser guys except for Z, because he's a little hard to get on a interview. And uh, Danny, I had just met Danny the last time I was in Detroit for Thanksgiving. I had never met him before. That's fire, yeah. Danny Benny Brown's a real cool guy. That's we did mushrooms true. together the first day we met. Damn, that's fucking heat. <laughs> that's fucking heat. I've done that with a few rappers. I'm like their like white boy mushroom. <laughs> like i guess i guess we'll try it with him like i don't know if you know ito out of rochester uh, he did, yeah i ain't hip but that's fucking fire dog like shit i don't knock nobody you ever do him nah my man one, one of one of my best friends one of my best friends that just did mushrooms for the first time uh and he was telling me it was great you feel me yeah but i can't fuck with it man I can't. why not <laughs> i can't man I can't fuck with the psychedelics, man. Cause bro, like, I don't know, bro. Like, I got I got like a uh I got like an inner voice in my yeah. head, like all day long. You know how people be having evil voices that be talking to him and shit. Like yeah. this, this voice just be chilling. You feel me? Like he'll be he'll be tripping and shit. He'll be trying to advise me on shit. I don't want to take anything that I, I think might fuck with his existence. Mm, that's some real shit. It's funny, my inner voice was a real asshole and still I until I introduced like mushrooms to See, it. That's that and it kind of chilled them out. Yeah. And that's why I like smoke a little weed and chills them yeah, out. Yeah, you know? yeah, real shit, bro. Real shit. Yeah. yeah. People, people don't know that like motherfucker, that, that inner voice should be real. Like I love I love him. We kicking it right now. You yeah. feel me? He chilling. Yeah, because I think that's if you don't listen to them, that's when you give up. Like that's like the you being like my channel got deleted. Fuck it, you know. Yeah, but yeah, hell you yeah. got to be like, no, I'm still gonna push towards like yeah, what I yeah. want to do. When my channel got deleted, he was in there. He was on my head. Like, bro, come on, bro. You know we gotta shake back from this shit. You <laughs> yeah. know we gotta shake back. He be in my head telling me I'm tripping. Like I don't need to be doing certain shit before I do something. You feel me? Do I listen to him all the time? No, but I need to. You know. So you did think this was going to be what you were doing when you were younger? Yeah. Sure. Not rapping? Yeah. No, 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 no. Like, I, of course, like, everybody in music used to rap. Like, yeah, I used to rap when I was younger, but I always knew I wanted to be a, a, a have a record label. Like, I remember in sixth grade, I had a teacher named Mr. Hines. He said, everybody create a, bu- create a business. I created my last name, Mary Weather. I'm, I created a cutout building. That said M Records, and I had the building. It was a blue building. It was kind of looked like this for real, but it was a blue building. And I had it on there, and I I was explaining it to him. 
And I, I, I still don't, I don't fuck with Mr. Hines to this day, man. He told me, he, he told me that shit wasn't gonna work. You feel me? Like he was like, for real? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. He like, man, you could do something. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he told me I was on some bullshit. So I know when Mr. Hines be seeing this shit, I, I know it hit a little different for him. Cause you, you legit, damn. But I bet that helped, like that pushed you. Yeah, I take, I take every time somebody tell me I can't do something, bro. I really take it as yeah. motivation. You feel me? I've been talking about this, but I think it's important. The day before I started this podcast, fifteen of my closest like comedian friends all told me not to do it. They're like, really? "Man, everyone has a podcast. You shouldn't do that shit." And like two people who are still my close friends were like, nah, bro, you know what you're doing. And none of those other people are doing shit. Like, that's motivation to yeah, me. Yeah, real like- shit, real shit, bro, real shit. Because because you see that, like, like, bro, even people in your family, bro, like, if you got an idea and you know that your energy going to throw off what you're trying to do, sometimes you can't yeah. talk to them, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll I be feeling I'll be feeling bad about that shit sometimes because sometimes I don't want to come to my family, some of my shit. They gonna greet my idea with ne- negativity, and that and my inner person doesn't like that. Yeah. Do you have people you can like open up to? Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. I got a I got a girlfriend. Oh, is that yeah. Right. And I got a son. Like you feel me? My yeah. son is, is he just turned one. Oh wow! Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, man. I love him so much. And my girl, I tell her anything. You feel me? So I could I just chop it up with her about some shit. You feel me? Like, and that's my person who I could really kick it with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's important. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. That's something that, like, I realized having, I don't know if you feel this, but, like, sometimes interviewing someone, you're like, damn, you've never had anyone, like, ask you a personal question. Like, no one in your life is, like, yeah. asking you this yeah. shit before, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's good, but it, it, it feels bad. I think you need people to, like, open up to. Yeah, I feel like everybody needs somebody to open up to, uh so man so you thought you were gonna have this late like you really and then you yeah. get your fucking shout out baby tron getting re- rode up and like yeah. you're really you really created something yeah yeah for sure for and sure. you always knew that for sure for sure i always knew that for sure like i always knew i, I always knew i wanted to uh like slide over and do something different and like uh i i, I knew tron was gonna be a star when i first seen him you feel me so that's what why this was pushing like because he because tron got the charisma he really care about music a lot you feel me all the shitty boys do you feel me yeah like stan stan will is really gonna be a star bro people are sleeping on stan will stan will is cold as dog shit bro like <laughs> i'm glad we sitting here having this interview because you're gonna be able to play this back when stan biggest Baby trying this, by the end of this year, like it's gonna be fucking crazy because people yeah. don't expect it. You know? Like, all right, well, you know, some bullshit. <laughs> like, ain't nobody then nobody can pray with a trying. Like, Stan is on that. And then right behind him, you got TRD. You feel me? So you got the shitty boys, man. The shitty boys is here to stay, man. I'm trying to tell you, all them three guys got real good talent. Like, how did you link up with them? I had a contest and uh I was letting people. Uh, I was picking a couple people to be in this contest. And I let whoever got the most interactions win the contest. They won the contest, and we got to working from there. Really, it was through a contest. Yeah, yeah through a contest I had. That's cr- what? How did you know? You just like right away you knew. Well, they got the most interactions on it. They got the most comments and shit in the contest yeah. and shit. So I had to fuck with them. That they they won the contest. So then I put it. I know, studio. but like. But I put you don't in, have to like, you know, fuck with them like sign them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But like I put them in the studio and they was just working and they was cool as hell. So we locked in from there. Consistency. Yeah, consistency for sure. When I told them to pull up to the studio, they won't know no bullshit. It wouldn't never know, oh, my mama said, or <laughs> uh, it was just niggas was pulling straight up. Yeah. That made us build a relationship and I ended up signing them and from there it was it was on and popping. That's correct. Was that the first artist you signed? No, I wasn't the first artist I signed. For sure, I had a, I had I had a lot of artists that ain't work out. You feel me? Yeah, a lot of artists ain't work out. You know, trial and error is just why anything goes. You know. Yeah, but were they the first ones that really started popping? Yeah, for sure, the ones that really started to create revenue at a at a large in a large scale. Yes, yeah, for sure. When did you realize that was gonna that they were different? Like, when did you realize, oh, shit, this is something else? 
Oh, from the name. Once once they told me that, yeah, I, I tried to get them to change the name. At from first. Shitty Boys? Yeah. I'm like, bro, we can't do this shit. They're like, no. I said, yeah, I fuck with y'all. I fuck with y'all. Just like how you had your vision and yeah, all they had yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> like I then I then there I then there call like like the hip hop lab records I uh, like like you know you know how they got BC before Christ yeah like I got I got BSB before shitty boy <laughs> before shitty yeah you <laughs> feel <me>? after shitty <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you feel me yeah so before shitty boy is a whole chapter you feel me that's a whole another whole another demon right there we you know yeah I fuck I fuck with that I've been fucking with I mean I am from Mass. But I think the first shit I heard, I mean, it's probably pretty popular, but it was like Moonwalking by Icewear back in oh, 2015, yeah. which then put me on to the like that's fire. Det- Detroit scene heavy. That's fire. Like that one song was like, there's certain songs that like change everything. And then that led me into everything. And then I think I found Shitty Boys early. When did you sign them? In 2019. Okay. That must have been. Cause shout out, shout out my boy Jay. His brother's like, for real. Like when he finds out that you're on this podcast, he's gonna freak out because he loves y'all. Yeah, for real, from that's crazy. yeah. But I was put on early, and I just fuck with the not, not uh, giving a fuck, but also giving a fuck. Yeah, it's what I like about the imperfections of this podcast. Like, you just go and you do your thing, and that natural, natural shit is the best. Oh, for sure. So, damn. So they you signed them in 2019. Uh-huh. And what were you like before that? Did you think was shit like before that? Were you like still doing shit like? Oh yeah, I was doing interviews and shit. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, of course that, that that's what made them me signing to me. Right. What was brainer. your first like big interview? My first big interview was Yeah Yeah Jordan. He was a popping Detroit rapper at the time. Yeah. He's currently serving time like 60 years. You know I mean? He was that was probably like my first big interview. And then I interviewed Peasy. That was a real big one. Damn. Then I interviewed Icewear. And that was like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of just a snowball effect from there. I build relationships and shit like that. My fault. No, <laughs> Thirsty you know, as fuck, yeah. man. But nah, do you, when did you start like realizing that you, you were like affecting the Detroit music scene? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know. Probably when I don't know, man. What I realized I was affecting it when, like, people I started seeing people really was giving a fuck about what I said. Like, you know, yeah, I've been doing this shit for a minute now. So, yeah, bro, that's a that's crazy to even think about. Like, do you feel it? Like, do you feel like you're affecting the scene? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Like, I could turn you up. Yeah, I could turn you up in the D for sure. I saw I'm for sure affecting it for sure. Yeah, but when did like what when, it just kind of like comes on, like like it just kind of came because like yeah. I was the only person pushing that at the time, bro. Like at the time when I was doing interview like 2015, like it wasn't nobody really doing like real street interviews in Detroit, like in Detroit, Detroit. Like you feel me? Like, yeah, or the people that I just chose to interview at the time, all them, all those people, like put in a lot of hard work that I interviewed and that just made my interviews mean more because all these people just surpassed, went crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? On their own, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just got to working it, working hard. So it, it helped me out a lot too, you know? Yeah. And being real, like, thank yeah. you for like, welcome me here, but like being very like, welcoming. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. I'm welcoming like, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you. And if I don't, you know I don't. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When did you realize Detroit was taking off? Man, bro, I ain't gonna lie. People told me I was wasting my time doing Detroit content like 2015, 16, 17, 18. So 
probably like 20, bro. T Grizzly dropping first day out changed everything for Detroit. You feel me? So, yeah. People, whether people want to believe it or not. And, you know, I did an interview with him like uh, before the first day out drop. Oh, really? Yeah. Right before it dropped, like a couple weeks. Yeah. People do forget that he really did. People forget how big that song was. Yeah, that song's crazy. Open up a lot of doors. Damn. So that was twenty. When did that song drop? Twenty sixteen. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. You interviewed him before that came out. Yeah. And then that song dropped, and that's when you realized Detroit was crazy. No, I mean, I knew, I knew what Detroit was on before that. I knew we always had a crazy yeah. song. That was gonna take with some. It was just gonna take something to just reignite it. Everybody fucking with it. Everybody fucking with us, you know, and yeah. that and that was 2016, and we still didn't get the popping, popping, going crazy until now. You feel me? Yeah. That was just a, that was just a foot in the sand. You feel well, that's me? Like, crazy seeing like I swear people like turning his shit up. Yeah. I mean, and he deserves it, but oh, he's been sure. popping for so long. Like his, yeah, yeah. Like he, bro, he didn't had a song down there every summer. So he didn't <laughs> had the summer every summer in Detroit. So it's good for somebody from your city, your backyard. It's able to be champion and put on a plateau. You know what I'm saying? A bigger plateau is just crazy, you know? When did you open up the studio? Last year. This ain't my first studio, but this is the best one. This is a this is a dope-ass studio. Thank you. Man. And to be able to do it off of your own shit, like, before 30, like, I don't, not even that that matters, but, like, just doing it off, uh, talking to people, interviewing, and then being able to start a label and then getting, like, the real recognition. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It all started with uh, interviews, for sure. Yeah. Everything, you got to just, everything was just a uh, process of me just building on the different shit and, you know what I'm saying, experiencing different experiences and doing different stuff. And How'd you meet Primo and Danny? Um, How I met Primo? I met Danny. Um, How did I meet Danny? I met Danny through Stan Will of the Shitty Boys. He told me it was somebody he's sweet. And then I ended up seeing, seeing vibing with him, seeing if I could fuck with him on a consistent basis. And I ended up fucking with him. But then I ended up meeting Primo through Danny. Yeah. Those yeah. the guys, man. Yeah. Those and the, the, the beats, the the sample, all of it's crazy. And then, then uh, Mark A. That's what we're making a lot of the shit for trying and shit. Yeah. Yeah, he fired. He part of the hip hop lab too. What other artists do you have? Oh, um, J One Hundred. He from uh Arkansas, and um, uh, G Mac Cash. You know he from yeah. Detroit. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, it's a dude named Sick P. He up and coming. Tilly Home. He up and coming. A lot of guys I'm just working with, man. Just you know, what I'm saying we just building up. Yeah. But what do you look for in an artist? Um, what I look for in an artist, um, um, bro, you just gotta be able to sustain yourself, bro. Just you hear me? I want to just see that you working. Like, yeah. I, like I met J One Hundred off off of him paying for promotion. I he just kept trying to pay for promotion, and it made me want to fuck with him because I'm like, you really give a fuck about your shit, you know? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? It just made me really open up to him. But like Primo. That nigga is be working like a motherfucker, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like yeah. Primo, like you gotta get you a Primo, bro. Like they need to, they need to, they need to take Primos, manufacture them motherfuckers in stores. They need to be at Walmart's and Family Dollars all across the country. Yeah, he 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 work he working motherfucker, bro. You feel me? You have to be addicted to the grind. Yeah, for sure. You gotta be addicted to the grind, bro. Like right now, my inner person been telling me that I've been bullshit all week because this shit I'm supposed to edit. You feel me? Yeah. And I can't shut them up for nothing. <laughs> so I got to edit that shit. You know yeah. Do like, you ever, like, do you feel burned out? Like, do you do things to, yeah. like, yeah. Bro, I feel burnt out all the time. <laughs> I feel burnt out right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you do ever, do you ever get time for yourself or do you? Bro, I feel like every time I figure out, every time I get time for myself, I'm trying to figure out how to monetize it. You feel me? So then it just becomes not fun eventually. Like, yeah, you get addicted to like the grind. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. For sure. Because like if you take a day off, it's like, why the fuck am I taking a day off? I like, could be bro. doing something. Yeah, bro. Like, bro, 
I didn't drop on YouTube. I didn't drop on YouTube for 12 days and lost 4,000. Damn. What were you doing? It like were you? Did, was that good? Did you need those days? Was it worth it? Bro, I was burnt the fuck out, bro. Was it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it was worth the four bands, dog. Yeah, but like you feel, I literally was burnt out, bro. Like you feel me? Yeah. Like dog, I couldn't keep going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I feel you. But still, though, that's a lot of fucking money to lose in twelve days, bro. But you also do need that time or you crash. Like if you're talking about like consistency over a long period of time. Yeah, for sure, for like, sure. You do need some time to break. Man, but I ain't gonna lie, man. Are you you dropping this on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. So I might even gonna say that. <laughs> no, what? I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> but we but 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 we we need we need Patreons, bro. Yeah. Literally. I agree with that, but when I think about it, I'm like, damn, the only way people like music or is because it's easy yeah but like you got and, and this is the only thing like you're saying it's easy because what we on right now like the tube right yeah it's like they don't they can like pay you what they want I like, like that you got quiet like it's like a conspiracy yeah, it is that. bro you started whispering <laughs> you see you see i didn't say the actual name you see i said the two yeah because no, I mean, what i'm about to say i can't even you feel me like it's for real like yeah. bro it's serious they demonetize videos like bro, that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And I smoke on all my shit. So, like, if they see smoke and they demonetize it. Like, yeah, bro. So did, did you pass the threshold to get monetized? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's fire. But it's like, uh, uh, it's like, who else is going? What else do everybody got on a phone? Yeah. What platform is around the world? And like, it's like YouTube, like you either about to make us pay or we about to make you or we about to make you it's like yeah. you want to get fucked or you want to get fucked it's like, yeah but it's like artists who only put their shit out on band camp which is fine it's not it's, fine that's terrible it's, if, you, if, if you just put your shit out on band camp you're not you're 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 like i don't even understand that logic of that type of shit like <laughs> but you know what i mean that's yeah. the, that's to me that's yeah. like patreon i do get the money but like who's really gonna like go to do that the people shit. that fuck with you bro yeah that's the why it's good to put like you. maybe special shit on yeah, like I, I wouldn't stop doing it. I wouldn't stop like, bro. I'm about to get on this Patreon. Like the next shit that you see me on the on the internet talking about is gonna be me talking about my Patreon, bro. Like yeah. no cap, bro. Well, you have a big enough following that I feel like the Patreon might be beneficial. I feel like yeah. for me, I need to do like yeah, you gotta get people free shit right now. But yeah, for sure. I want you to just keep that in the back of your head, like, bro, because it's like. I don't know, dog. You know, what are they? You need seven se- the you need seven streams of income. Yeah, hey, for sure to become become a millionaire, for sure. For yeah. sure, you need seven streams of income, dog. For sure, for sure. I try to think about that. I feel like so many people, no matter what it is, fall off because they don't know how to maintain money or have their money make their money. So that's something I'm learning is like when I make my money, I'm gonna invest it quick and like good shit, not like yeah, you know, because yeah. I can't be it's crazy to think i could get an advance and i think people do this and blow it in a single purchase no for sure that's crazy you know like you got to have your money making money you can't just be man bro the thing i ain't gonna lie something that really fucked me up bro nobody i didn't know that i had to pay taxes on this youtube money bro mm. you gotta pay, so we get that youtube check bro Remember, you gotta pay taxes on that shit. You feel and me? now Venmo and Cash App, you have to pay taxes on that. Yeah, shit that's some. Too. I'm not using that shit no more. Yeah, I'm, I'm straight on. If I gotta pay taxes on that shit, bro, I'm just be like, look, bro, you gotta send me cash, bro. Yeah, <laughs> but we gotta meet up or something, or we gotta figure something else out. Cause that shit's wild. That shit. Is Anything really over six hundred? Are you kidding me? Or or or. Just average, you got to send three payments of a three hundred, or you feel me? Or you yeah. know what I'm saying? We got to just not go over the six, but. No, but it's six hundred. Oh, is it six hundred in a single purchase? I thought it was six hundred over a year. Oh, I don't know. I don't know the specifics. But that, that shit's shit. wild. Yeah. I know. Yeah, and people get fucked with that tax shit. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, what's the name? Uh, what's it? J- Fat Joe. Fat Joe was in jail for taxes, motherfucker. <laughs> really? Uh, God yeah. damn. Wesley Snipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like taxes evasion is real. Tax problems is real. It's very real. How do you do it? How do you maintain? Like, do you like? I got a CPA now. Did like, you set up an LLC at first? Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't done that. 
Yeah, make sure you get on that, dog. LegalZoom.com, the easiest. Everyone thing. says legals. I'm, it sounds like I'm doing a plug, but literally everyone says legal. <laughs> <laughs> they should just write me a check, bro. The way I did you see, I even perked up like yeah, I was yeah, doing yeah, a, yeah. like I was hey, reading yeah, that. Yeah. Everyone says legal. <laughs> you want a legal zoom right now and type in our code. You know what I'm <laughs> Yo, that shit's yeah, hilarious. Dog, that's crazy. Uh, no, but if for real, I, I should do that. Yeah. Uh, someone told me that if you make over 10 grand a year in your shit, you should turn it legal. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I don't know about the 10 grand part, but <laughs> I mean, just anything, just excuse me, just anything, dog. You know, you might, you might have a, um, you drop it, you drop, you drop this on like Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, Podcast I, yeah, I do Apple, Spotify. Yeah, that's fire. The tube. <laughs> 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 Oh uh, <laughs> shit! So do, do 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 you get a? Cause I I was dropping them on there, but I wasn't doing consistently. Like, is do, is it a good payout from that too? No, it's not a good payout. But I definitely have, I would say, a stronger like people who listen really do listen because okay, it's like because if they're at work, they can't watch it, so they'll just like put it in their ears. Like, that's fine. I think it's good. But the video, YouTube is where definitely I get more most of my views. And I think I don't know if you do this, but I cut clips from my videos and that shit like blows up my videos. Yeah, like what, if I what, cut like a five to ten minute clip from it. What do you post it at? YouTube. Okay, I'll yeah. give it like a clickbaity title, but not a like like what it really is. But, you know, like because I don't title my interviews like blah, blah, blah talks about blah 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 but i'll cut a clip for that and then if they watch that maybe they'll watch the whole thing yeah like when conway uh the machine like announced that he was going to retire on my podcast like i didn't put like fucked up episode 134 conway says he's going to retire but like i cut that clip and put like conway announces retirement on bucked up podcast and then that got a bunch of views which then made people go watch the full episode fire Fire. Yeah. I, uh, I got some podcast episodes. I got to edit actually after this. Man. Do you do you do the editing yourself? Unfortunately, bro. You should. <laughs> you need someone to help you with that. Bro, they don't. Bro, it's not. I'm sorry. All my people why they had edit for me. You know, I fuck with y'all still, but it's just never right, bro. It's just never right. That's why I just put this out. Like even lulls or whatever, like I keep it in because that's, I don't know. I just, I, I hate cutting. I don't know. I don't like cutting. I don't like cutting shit, man. I also hate watching. Are you like you watch? Yes, bro. It's so fucking cringy, bro. bro it's, it's so horrible, fucking cringy, bro. bro. It's fucking cringy, bro. I hate fucking watching myself, bro. And I got to do it all the fucking time, dog. Yeah. Yeah, oh you're editing God. your own shit. Yes, that's... bro. And especially like this podcast, I got to edit two podcasts. They like an hour, thirty minutes. They like an hour and thirty minutes a piece. And Damn, shit, you feel me? So, and you cut it down to a half hour. No, those the interviews in a podcast is different. Like you feel me? Like yeah. I was just literally, literally just doing interviews with people. So you know what I'm saying? Those is like thirty minutes. But like I actually since the year started, I actually been doing like hour long podcasts, like kind of like some shit that we doing now. Oh, I cool. had these four seats filled up, at, like two two females. You feel me? Yeah, some shit like that. Yeah. What are some of your coolest and like the interviews that you were happiest with? Uh, Royce the Five Nine interview I did. That one I've watched that one. Yeah, that one. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, um, uh, my recent Louis Ray interview. I was happy about that one. My recent Peasy interview. My recent Rio the Young OG interview before he went to jail. Oh shit! Those are some of my favorite ones. Yeah, free Rio, man. That, yeah, definitely free Rio. That the whole Flint Beecher shit is blowing up. I I fuck with it heavy. Yeah, for sure. Man, it's funny. West Side Gun and Y and J were my two most listened to artists this year. For real, that's, crazy. that's yeah, the most yeah. opposite. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you Apple Music right now. That's yeah, those crazy. are my two most listened to artists. My favorite artist is Rod Wave, bro. I fuck with Rod Wave heavy. Yeah. He needs to stop getting his heart broken. But yeah. it's, it's, man, I'm with it, dog. I, I like it all, bro. I he's wanna, like, I, he's like the dude Adele. Like, like, I love it, bro. I, I fuck with it. it. Did you listen yeah. to his new song, Cold December? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, shit December, I fuck with that shit. Yeah. I fuck with Adele, too. 
I, fuck, I, I like I like a lot of music. People would be surprised, bro. That yeah, I like, like bro. who? Like Natasha Benningfield. Oh, really? <laughs> like pocket full of sunshine, bro. You feel me? Like, I would have never expected. You feel me? That. What I'm saying, yeah. bro. I fuck with Avril Lavigne, bro. You feel really? me? Like, yeah, that's my shit, bro. I listen to a lot of like indie rock or like the country, all like not country, but like you know, like weird Kurt Vile. If no one listening knows who that is, but like, but no, nah, I'm mostly rap. Man, bro. Oh, man. See, that's why I had to go to my shit real quick, bro. Freddie Mercury, bro. <laughs> Time waits for no one, man. <laughs> yeah. People ain't hip to Freddie Merc. Uh, we have you off the Freddie Merc around this month. You're playing that 24-7 in the hip-hop lab. What? In the hip-hop whip? <laughs> They're not letting you put that yeah, shit Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, trying, <laughs> trying, trying, and them ain't fucking with, ain't fucking with me, dog. But uh, the thing I do love is the, the fucking... Not like just crazy samples. Like I, that's what I love about all this shit in Detroit. Whether it be you guys or you're talking about Z or like Danny, like you guys pick the craziest samples and shit. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I feel like nobody can compare it to Danny Brown, bro. Like he's like a like Danny Brown, bro. Niggas got to give him his flowers, bro. Yeah, because he's he's a crazy motherfucker unapologetically he is a crazy motherfucker you feel me yeah like but he 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 was he was he was the crazy motherfucker when it wasn't cool to be the crazy motherfucker with his tooth out on the double xl you feel me like now it's cool for everybody to be crazy and the shock value shit you know what i'm saying i just gotta get down his flowers bro and have you ever interviewed him I never interviewed him before i never interviewed him before but i have met him before he's a great guy yeah you know what I'm saying? Uh, he probably thinks I'm way more wild than I am because we did mushrooms the first day <laughs> and then we both hit a DMT pen on Fuck. Bruiser Thanksgiving, bro. <laughs> that, Fuck. That shit Is was... that a Denny Brown shirt? You oh, I didn't even... Yeah I, got, oh, yeah, I got this at the Bruiser Thanksgiving. I forgot That's I fire. had it on. That's fine. Yeah. Never did DMT either. Nah, <laughs> bro. I can't. I told you. Bro, look, if, I hit, if I hit my head too hard, my nigga, I stopped being able to hear him, bro. Like, I stopped being able. He shuts the fuck up. So, like, I can't do nothing else but weed. I, don't, I can't even drink, bro. I don't drink alcohol. Like, I don't, oh, really? I don't like getting drunk. As you don't even hit my joint. Man, I don't even smoke joints, bro. <laughs> Just the backwood. Just the wood, What's your man. flavor? Original or Russian cream? The Russian cream. All right. Yeah. I never got to smoke the banana. I stopped smoking blunts before the banana came Man, out. Man, the bananas, them bitches is nasty anyway. You don't like uh, that shit? Hell no. Right. Have you ever... There's some... Cra- I like how different the artists in Detroit are. Like, I fuck with Boldy James Heavy. I like his music. Yeah, I've been knowing Boldy James for a minute. Yeah, because he's been making music for a long time. Mm-hmm. Damn. What are some of the interviews you want to do that you haven't done? Um, in Detroit or just in general? In general. Man. Or in Detroit. We'll do both. Uh, in Detroit, some interviews I want to do that I haven't done. Um, I never interviewed Bodie. I've been known Bodie since 2015. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, bro, I really interviewed everybody in Detroit, bro, at least one time. You feel yeah. me? Like, uh, I w- I'm looking forward to doing a, a City Boys interview. Um, you haven't done it one yet? No, I haven't done. I just did one with Tron, just trying. Uh, and that was that just dropped yesterday. But I want to do one with all of them before this new album come out. Um, when does their new album come out? Uh, it's coming out very soon, like next week, next couple weeks, or next the end of before January over with the new oh, shit. Boy, I want to be really? out. Really? What's yeah. it called? Trifecta. Damn. Yeah. Any features or just them? Uh, I'm not even too sure, dog. I'm yeah. not too sure, but it's, it. it's 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 fucking fire though. Um, 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 um. How about artists in general? Oh, Raw Wave. Uh, uh, for sure. Got it. That's on my interview bucket list. Kodak Black. I for sure want to interview <laughs> interview Kodak. Yeah. Uh, um, um, um. I would let her do an NBA Young Boy interview. I want to interview DJ Academics. I want to from Detroit. Man, I want to interview Jalen Rose, man. Hopefully, my hopefully my dog Ty Mopkins can make it. Ty Mopkins can uh make it happen for me. Shout out to big homie Ty Mopkins. 
man, I want to interview Jalen Rose bad as hell, dog. That would be lie. insane. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Damn. You must be able. You must be able to. Yeah, I just ain't really pressed it like how I'm supposed to. I'm pressing the issue this year. Yeah, I feel that like interviews happen when they happen. Like I was in Detroit and I wanted to talk to you, so like I DM'd you, but like I never push it. You know what I mean? I never push because people don't like that. I feel like it'll happen naturally when it's supposed to. No, for sure. But it's like, uh, bro, like I'm saying, I'm open to interviews, bro. Like you feel me? I, I like. I like sitting down, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel like you're doing too much? Or are you good being able to handle all of it? I'm definitely doing too much, dog. I'm definitely doing too much, dog. For sure. I need to find some more help to... You need someone to edit your podcast. I feel like your life would be so much easier dog, if you found bro. someone who was good. I think I, I got to just stop being so particular, bro. Because, like... I want to, I want to, I want to take an hour long podcast and I want to break the hour long podcast up. Like, you know, you said you drop clips from it. I want to drop eight minute clips from there. I want to take the most interesting parts and drop eight minute clips from there. But I want to do this shit at a high level, bro. I want to do this shit proficiently. Like, you feel me? Like, I don't yeah. know, man. I just, it's, it's like we were just talking about, about being too hard on yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel you. But I, I don't know. Like when I like watching podcasts, I like watching my producer, shout out Irish, told me about this. Like, people like watching me fuck up almost. Like, when shit's not good. Yeah. Like, they like watching me being, like, struggling a little bit. Like, even if they're a fan of me, they're not me. Like, it might be hard for me to watch it. But, like, people like when, like, I did an episode with this dude, uh, Pockets Graham. You can watch it. And, uh, like, we almost got in a fight on the podcast. And I almost didn't put it out. Damn, like, what the fuck y'all get into a fight fight about? He was just, he wanted to make it a bad podcast. Like, he wanted to make, and then I was like, I'm not doing this. And <laughs> now I sound like I'm tripping crazy, but he was on acid, I was on mushrooms. And oh, he just wanted to make it bad. So, like, we almost got in a fight, and I almost co- canceled it, but we ended up having, like, an interview, putting it out, and I put it all out, because I was like, you know what, people should see, like, even me when I've lost control of an interview. I that's, think people like that. That's definitely a different dynamic, dog. That's crazy. That's fucking wild. <laughs> you never had anyone get combative with you? Man, fuck yeah, bro. I got some shit, but I ain't put it out, though. You yeah. feel me? I, but, but like, thinking back on it, it would have been crazy if I would have dropped this shit, bro. I had this girl that was so fucking drunk, bro, just saying all type of crazy. Saying all type of crazy ass shit, bro. I'm just on an interview looking like... <laughs> You're just getting wild, bro. Like, man, I can't even say too much because she she didn't know who she is. But that <laughs> shit was wild, dog. And you couldn't put the episode out. Uh, nope. Damn, I couldn't put that. I couldn't put it out. Yeah, there's only like two ep. Nah, there's only one episode. I've I've two episodes I've ever not been able to put out. Oh, let me grab these woods. Yeah, no problem. Nah. I know you just moved into this place, but like, do you have goals or are you just going with the flow right now? You know what Norman Leary is? Are we recording right now? Uh, do you want to? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't got to, though. No, let's do it. Let's. But, but you, do, do you know who that is, though? Norman Lear? The name sounds familiar, but no. So, Norman Lear is the creator of 227. You know what that is? I would expect you to, bro. Not like that though, but it's just like most most motherfuckers. This that's that's it's an old ass black show, bro. You you heard of all in the family? Oh oh yeah, I know Nor. Yeah uh huh. He used to be like a showrunner. Yeah, mm-hmm. they all these shows, bro. Yeah. So I that I do. Yeah, I'm about to do sitcoms, bro. I'm working on a sitcom right now. Are you? Real shit. Damn. About what? You said we're we not recording right now. Do you not want to talk about it on? Uh, not, not the plot anyway. I'll tell you off camera. Okay. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy, though. What made you want to do that? Shit. Motherfucking, uh, bro, I always was int- I'm just doing everything I always wanted to do, bro. I always interested in that shit. You feel me? So tackling it this year. About to start shooting in the, in the spring. Really? Are you doing it all indie? All indie, bro. 
Oh, yeah. Where are you gonna are you gonna release it yourself or are you gonna try to sell it? Well, I'm gonna release it myself on Amazon Prime and Tubi and all that good shit. That's dope as shit. Amazon Prime. What made you want to, like, you just always wanted to do it? But Always wanted to do that shit, bro. Always wanted to do that shit. Would you ever want to put your podcast on a TV show or, like, do the interviews, or do you like it being? I don't know, bro. Not sure. I don't think I would. I don't think you could smoke. I don't think you could be, like, it's free. Yeah, I ain't really fucking with that shit, bro. I the only wanna... free shit is like Action Bronson shit, maybe. Yeah, shout out Action Bronson, man. That's a dream interview. For you? Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> the Alchemist. I li- Do you listen to any of that shit, like the Griselda shit? Or the Action Bronson? Like, do you listen to any of that shit? Not really, but I have utmost respect for it. Mm-hmm. I respect the crap. Yeah. Those guys are doing something that... That's extraordinary, and that's great, but I just don't. Yeah. It's just not really soothing to my ear. <laughs> what do you listen to, like, rap-wise? Um, or what are you check- listening to right now? Bro. Um, Ride Wave, YFN, Lucci. Oh, YFN, Lucci is dope. Yeah, I love YFN, Lucci. Yeah. Though. I mean, you think he's coming out? I don't know, man. I don't. Th- he's. It's not looking good for him. I don't know, bro. I hope he do. Yeah. Situation just look crazy. Situation look. But crazy. you know, but you know, it ain't. It it is. We don't know his side of the story yet, so it ain't no telling what it might be. Yeah. You know, just like YNW Melly, people say he want to come home, and they say he might be coming home. I don't know. Does yeah? Didn't they say he was coming home like today or tomorrow or something? Maybe. This week. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Yeah. What artist would you want to work with Baby Tron most? What artist would I want Baby Tron to work with yeah. the most? Uh, Drake, Kanye, you know, <laughs> the big motherfucker. That shit could happen. Yeah, for sure. It ain't far-fetched anymore. No, it uh-huh. isn't. Yeah. That's crazy. When the shit, when, like, it was put on all, it was put on the, the um, Rolling Stone list. Yep. It was higher than Donda and CLB. <laughs> that shit. That's crazy. <laughs> Shout out Rolling Stone. Yeah. Did you know that was, or did you just find out what's everyone else? I didn't know that that was going to, like, fuck no. Yeah. I didn't know they was going to rank us out. Man, <laughs> high. That was crazy. That is wild. It is, it's a great-ass project. And it's one that, like, I think the first listen and, like, the sixth listen are completely different. Man, trying is a animal, bro. Yeah. You have TV shows. You got all that shit. Do you do you have anything like? Do you see yourself as like a Diddy? Like uh, like what do you see for your main future? Man, I ain't gonna lie. My my my, my mama called me Diddy. That's really what she called me. She's she been calling me P Diddy for the long. <laughs> but bro, I ain't gonna lie. I really just I want to make some new shit. I want to make it so niggas want to be like. And I love Diddy. You feel me? Like, you respect to his blue his blueprint for sure. I want to be like, niggas be like, oh, he on some Lando shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? no, 100%. Like, I want to make that a, make that a, 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 a something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you are. I mean, you're on the way to that shit. Yeah, That's so, crazy. Thank you, too, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. And you always felt that shit. Do you think people can, like, find it, or do you think you were born with it? Uh, I feel like it's something you got to be born with, dog. I ain't going to lie, honestly, man. It's something that you got to be born with, dog. Like, to be in this, like, what I'm doing all the way, like, it's something you got to be born with. Like, it's a lot of shit you can learn, but, dog, this yeah. shit is not for the for the uh, weak-hearted, dog. Yeah. And I think everyone, yeah, needs to find that thing. But Yeah, everybody got to find, they, everybody got a niche. They just got to find it. Yeah. This is mine, for sure. And this is mine. It's weird. I didn't even yeah. know. Like, I, I just kind of fell into it. Like, but it it works out. It's cool. Definitely, man. It's cool when you try to, like, when you put your mind to something, it actually does work out. Yeah. Presentation is everything, man. You feel me? You got a good presentation, bro. I appreciate that, man. Mm-hmm. Thank you for doing this. I really, I appreciate your time in the interview. No problem, man. No problem. Shit, I appreciate you pulling up. It's all I love. You feel me? It's, like, it's going to be our, uh, 
our first time sitting down with Rashad, not the last. Man. Yeah, nah, for sure not the last. Thank yeah. you, man. Do you want to plug anything before we? Uh, City Boys, I'm on the way. Shout out the whole hip hop lab, Danny, Primo, Mark, Jason, um, Shaq, and Rob. You feel me? Uh, those are my my business partners with the label in the studio. Uh, um. Yeah, I think that's it, man. <laughs> check your shit out. Yeah, on, yeah. Just check out check the Hip Hop Lab on YouTube, man. Check out, check out everything, man. It's the Hip Hop Lab record. City Boy album on the way. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate that's you. Fine. Peace, everyone.